Hi, this is Steph with Belladonna Dyes, and today's project is going to be a long sleeve experiment. For this project, and most of the projects that I make that are not spirals, I start by centering the shirt. So I'm using a washable marker to mark out the center points. Then I'm going to tuck one sleeve inside the other sleeve, and what this is going to do is create symmetry in the project. Now I have this sped up, but I do have a standalone tutorial that is slower, easier to probably follow along with if you're brand new to tie dyeing. And you'll find that in with all of the tie dye tutorials, but you can also find it in the playlist of tie dye tools. That's a really good playlist, especially if you're new because it has all of the mixing instructions and gadgets like ice machines and stuff like that. So I do recommend that you check that out. Now that the shirt is centered and all the wrinkles and everything are smoothed out best I can, now it's time to fold the shirt. And I have no idea what I'm doing. That's why I'm calling this an experiment because I'm just folding it. This one has quite a few edits in it because I just left in the important parts. But I was folding the shirt back and folding it over this way and flipping it and doing and, you know, just trying things out to see if I could come up with some random design. Um, I don't know if I really came up with anything different than what I normally do, but I tried. And recently I just did the live video with Margot Farnsworth and we did her freaky fan fold and this is nothing like that. But working with her reminded me that I had made this shirt several weeks ago and so I dug it out and I'm editing it so that you can see you know, a different type of fold. It's, it is not like Margot's fold, but it's just, it's similar in the sense that it's just a bunch of big folds on the shirt and then an accordion fold at the end. So once I get it all folded up, and this is a really thick fold, I'm just going to secure it by using rubber bands. And I'm using my tiny baby hair rubber bands for this one. You could also use kite string. You could also use sinew. It really is just a matter of preference. I like to use rubber bands as often as possible because I find them quick and easy. And you will find links for these rubber bands down below in the description box along with everything else that I use for tie-dye. So I recommend that you check that out. Now it's time for the fun part, and my favorite part, we get to add the dye. Ultimately, this shirt is going to be an incline ice dye, but I like to apply the dye to the project when it's flat, if I can. I feel like I have better precision. That way the dye doesn't wanna roll downhill and you know, kinda create a mess. And underneath there, I've placed this little foil pan that I got from the dollar store. It's catching all of the dye that falls down below, and ultimately I'm collecting all of that for doing projects like twofers. 
And this project will have a twofer, but we'll save that for tomorrow's video. Now I'm switching back and forth between my funnel scoops from Boredom with Jen and regular picnic spoons. No rhyme or reason as to why, it's just what I had available. And you can find the funnel scoops over on Etsy at Shop Boredom with Jen. And there is a link down below in the description box. A big shout out to the newest channel members, Jan Wadlington and Iona Sawyer, and I hope I pronounced those correctly. Thank you so much for your membership. Your proceeds will go back into the channel so I can continue to bring out new content. And for all of you that are already channel members and continue to be channel members, thank you so very much. I greatly appreciate it and your generosity does not go unnoticed. And for all of you that have clicked subscribe to my channel, thank you very, very much. By doing so, it helps my channel grow and it helps get the content out there so new dyers can learn how to tie dye. Also, while you're there clicking that subscribe, for those of you that have turned your bell on and set it to all, you will not miss out on new content and when we go live, it will send you a message so you don't miss out on anything. So you wanna make sure to go into your device setting and turn on um, notifications for YouTube. And then while you're down there doing all that, if you could please just hit the like button. Next, I give the project a quick little sprinkle of soda ash for good measure. And if you notice now, I have the project on an incline. I got this rack at Walmart and it's um, extendable. I've taken the extendable portion off. So it's elevated by the legs on one side and then it's just slightly inclined by being propped up on the foil pan. I've got the container down in there. Um, that's just holding it all to keep it from slipping around inside of the big tote. These foil pans have a tendency to leak, so make sure you place your project down inside something because you don't want to find muck water all over your floor. I set the project aside and just let it do its thing, and now this is the next morning. So I came and I checked it, and I peeked in the pleats. I have decent saturation, but I'm really not happy with my choice of the tropical dream. It looked really speckly and where the deep yellow and the tropical dream met, they made a really pretty green, but it just, I don't know, I just wasn't happy with it. So I decided that I wanted to use azure blue instead. So I went pretty heavy with the azure blue to try to get good saturation. And then I just beefed up the other colors because this is such a thick fold. I really wanted to make sure that it was all the way saturated. And then I just repeated the process. I added some ice, added some soda ash, and then I took it into the house where it's 70 degrees. And it's recommended that you let your project batch at 70 degrees or higher for at least 24 hours after the ice melts. But I prefer to batch at um, 70 degrees for the full 48 hours because it's cooler right now. In the summertime, I change things up, but right now, since it's still really cold, I want to make sure that the project has the maximum amount of time for the soda ash and the procyon dye and the fibers and the cotton and everything like that to just have a chance to bond because I want the shirt to be as bright as it possibly can be.
As you can see, I got some really good saturation. It's nice and dark on the backside. And when I peek in and I look into the pleats, I don't see any white, so that's a good sign. All right, for the rinse out process, I follow Dharma's instructions. So I start by using cold water to rinse away any soda ash that might still be reacting within the fabric. And then I increase my water up too hot and I rinse until the water runs pretty much clear. So the hot water removes any unbonded dye it goes down the drain instead of into your washing machine. Keeping in mind that I'm washing a whole bunch of stuff together, like six to 10 projects all at once, I don't want a bunch of unbonded dye in my washing machine creating a mucky, muddy mess. And you wanna get all that soda ash too. You just don't want that in your washing machine. Okay. So once it's at the washing machine, I like to do hot water cycles using Kirilon, and Kirilon is a professional textile detergent. And then I do a final hot water cycle using Milsoft, and Milsoft is a professional fabric softener. And then I'll put it in the dryer, and I'll iron it, and we'll come back and we'll see the results. Well, here it is guys. Here's our long sleeve experiment after it's been washed and dried. And I don't know, it's a funky little shirt. This is a youth size large, so it's, it's a small little shirt. It's super duper bright. I'm still struggling a little bit with that tropical dream green that happened from the deep yellow and the blue mixing. Um, but it's okay because what has happened here, it ha it's made a rainbow. And you guys know how much I love rainbows. Now right there, I think those weird little notches are coming from the rack. I've never seen anything like that before, but I can't think of what else they would be from. Has to be the rack. Or I mean, it could just be the fabric was, you know, kind of bunched up strange right there. I don't know. Now keep in mind, you guys, when you make yours, like if you wanna to try to follow along and do this particular pattern, you can choose any colors you want. I just have a propensity to go for the rainbows, especially when I'm playing around because rainbows just make me really super happy. One thing that I don't understand about this shirt is how sloppy it looks. And I'm not sure if that's because a shirt was like dried out or what. Usually the dye flows look a lot smoother than this. Um, I, I don't know. So I'm, I'm like on the fence with this shirt. I think it's super cool. It's unique. It's fun. It's bright and it's cheerful, but I don't know. There's something about it. So what do you guys think of this shirt? Please leave me some comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, leave a thumbs up, and click the bell and set it to all. That way you get notified of future uploads. And remember, have fun tie-dyeing.